Okay, thank you, Michelle. So uh, this is the title of my talk. I am. Um, I, my name is Sarah Liz. Uh, Sarah Liz, a little yeah. bit. Uh, Sarah Liz. Yes. Uh, uh, the first I you introduce for my student. Okay, the first. Okay. Okay, okay, take your time. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, Sarah Liz, for accepting my inviting. It's mm -hmm. a pleasure to to receive you in, in with us. Uh, Sarah Liz is a senior lecturer in the School Mathematica of University of Manchester. Mm -hmm. Your main research area are extreme value of theory and its application. Distribution theory, non-parametric statistic, information theory, reliability, sample theory, statistical software, and the time series, and the others. Sarah Liz has published over the 900 work among articles, books, and book chapters. He has worked with several Brazilian researchers, including myself, Lousada Neto, Gauss Cordeiro, Edwin, Carlos Santos, Ricardo Rochas, among others. He is a good friend and he is all with open arm to receive Brazilian Manchester. Thank you, Sarah Elise, and feel free to speak with us. Thank for you. Us. Thank you, Bora. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me for this. Uh, video presentation. Um, so uh, this is the title of my talk and as, as Vera said I'm from the University of Manchester so so the thing on the left hand side is the logo for the University of Manchester and the thing on the right hand side is a charity which is called Educate Africa which which is a charity I found I founded about four years ago in 20, 2017. Uh, I will explain later what this charity does. I mean, some of the things it does is, I, as part of this charity, I teach uh, postgraduate uh, and undergraduate and postgraduate courses to students in Africa free of charge. And I also work, supervise PhD students in Africa free of, free of charge. And I also um, collaborate, collaborate with researchers in Africa uh, like I recently, I had a paper published um, in scientific reports with, with an author from from Zimbabwe. Anyway, before before I start the talk, let me let me just briefly say the background for this talk. Um, I I grew up in a country called uh, Zimbabwe, which is uh, which is a small a land locked country uh, in southern Africa, just about. Um, so the South Africa. Uh, I mean, during my teenage years, I visited many of the countries in, in Africa, and I seen for myself the the poverty, the how poor the people in the continent are. I mean, they don't have access to water, education, um, you know, uh, food, everything. Everything is very very difficult. So this is kind of a motivation for this is kind of the background for the for the talk, but I will I will explain more about the motivation right now. So this is the the contents of the talk. So it's divided into these sections: motivation, data, methods, findings, comparisons, and conclusions and discussions. Um, and there is very little statistics in it. This is a kind of a general talk. So anybody. I know all of you guys are statisticians, but anybody should be able to understand this talk without having to know any, anything about statistics. Okay, so let me start with the motivation. Why, what's the purpose for this talk, right? So the, as you know, the Africa is rich, of, is rich with minerals. I mean, I think 40% of all the minerals in the world uh, in Africa, and uh, like for example, gold, like about nine percent of all the gold you can find in Ghana, Tanzania, uh, Guinea, and Burkina Faso, and uh, fifty-three percent of cobalt. Cobalt, I'm sh I'm sure you know, is used to 
produce computers and uh, computers and um, phones and mobile phones and iPhones and iPads and everything nowadays. Everything everybody uses nowadays is made out of cobalt. And about 53% of all the 53% of the cobalt in the world is in the Democratic Republic of Congo, or DRC for short. And about 22% of diamonds are in Botswana, and 16% of uranium is in Namibia and, and Niger. Niger. And, and so much, so there, there's so much resources, I mean, there are, Every con every country in in the con in Africa has so many so much resources, but yet yet Africa remains one of the poorest continent in the world, because I mean people from outside, especially from Europe and America, I mean North America and um, and other places, you know they 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 find a way to take to you know. Get rid. I mean, to find a way to rip off the continent. That's in other words, they 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 take all this mineral out of out of the continent, just paying money for the the big government officials, right? And the people there, they don't get any benefit out of it. All right. So that's that's one. I mean, so that's that's one motivation for this talk because. In spite of having all these resources, I mean, this not a lot has changed for the people in the in the continent, right? And also, you should look at the Jeff. You know, Jeff Bezos. He's the 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 the, the richest person in the world, and he his company Amazon is is built on minerals from Africa, and yet Africa remains very poor. Right, and uh, you know Bill Gates. He is the second richest person in the world, and his company Microsoft is again built on the minerals from Africa. Yet, Africa remains poor. And uh, I know Bill Gates and his his wife were now divorced. They have this charity. I think you know it's called the Bills and Melinda Gates Foundation. I mean that charity. I mean, he, he he claims that he helps people from Africa, but I don't think it's that's really the case because he. I mean, he, he uses his charity just to get tax tax relief for himself and his former wife, right? And now you have Elon Musk, who is the third richest tech billionaire. You know, he, although he is actually from South Africa, I mean, he, he is a citizen of South Africa. I don't think he cares a lot about Africa. I mean, he is currently based in the United States, um, as you know. So, and you finally you have Mark Zuckerberg, who is the who is the fourth richest billionaire. He 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 founded Facebook, again built on the minerals from Africa. And I don't know what he does about wanting to help people in in Africa, right? I mean, so these all the, the richest billionaires in the world, yeah, they they built their own companies, and these companies are built because of the minerals in Africa, and uh, what Africa gets from them is really nothing, you know, it's worse than nothing, right? And on top of that, I mean, the the people around the world they have a very negative opinion about Africa. Right, like if you look at the paper which was published in 2000, um, it, there was a paper that was published in uh, by Cameron, who is who is who was a, I think he was, he was a he was a professor at at Cape Town University of Cape Town in in South Africa. And he said that in that paper, he said that the IQ score of black africans is about the same as the people who are mentally retarded 
So in other words, he, he was implying that that the the intelligence of black Africans is is the same as people who are who have mental problems, right? This is a very bad things to say because I mean there are many black Africans in the world who have done very very well, ex including, for example, uh, President Obama, who was the president of the United States. He is a black African, and there were Nobel Prize winners who were who were like Nelson Mandela. He won the Nobel Prize, um, and there are other people uh, in the continent who also won the Nobel Prize who are black Africans. So, so to say something like that the intelligence of black Africans is, is the same as of somebody who is mentally retarded is, is very bad, right? And it's not just that, even the like, for example, you may you may recall this guy. He's the re, uh, president, the former president of the United States. Uh, his name is Ronald Reagan, and he said that that the delegates, the African delegates in the United Nations, were like monkeys, which is again a very and this is you I mean, you probably know this guy. He is the former president of the, Trump of the United States. And he labeled African nations as shithole countries. It's a very bad thing to say. Okay. Um, so all this, and all this motivated me to to the topic. Uh, Sara Lee, yes. uh, the, the the concept is the the people or uh, from Africa or uh, outside Africa who. Uh, say this has the concept about the America people of Africa people. They're the mainly, daddy, the daddy they're, they're mainly like people outside Africa, even people living in Africa who are not black. Like, like in South Africa, there are people who are who are white South Africans. I mean, they they have very very uh, bad they, they think that the black africans are not intelligent mm -hmm. they, think, they think that the black africans are not the, their intelligence is not uh this is a so bad idea <laughs> yeah it's very bad to say that their intelligence is the same as is the same as that of somebody who is uh, mental or mentally retarded is is very it's not a good thing to say mm -hmm. yeah so so um so and and on top of that also people like ronald reagan who was the president of the united states and Pre president trump who was the former president of the united states they said very negative things about africa all right um now let me let me get to the the, the purpose of this talk. Uh, so it's not <coughs> it, it's not just about um, getting the minerals uh, out of Africa just for their own benefits, but I, I also feel I mean uh, that that Africa is being being um, used in other ways too. One the the the, the thing I'm going to talk about. In in this talk is is about about research. You know, I know all of all of us. We write papers, and I've written papers with Vera. I've written papers with uh, Gauss, uh, with Carlos, and other people. We all all the time we write papers, um, but people are writing papers about about Africa. Like you know, like whenever there is something they discover a new species, like a new type of monkey or new type of, uh, uh, new type of uh, uh, insect, something, right? Um, they, they write a paper about it and they say that they found a new species, a new species of an animal or new species of a fish or new species of a plant uh, in Africa. And they they publish that in a very very top journal, like, and uh, these papers they are mainly written by people who are not Africans, 
know, these people, these papers are written by people from America, from the United States, or from Europe, or from uh, UK, or some other country, and 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 these, and they give no credit. They give no credit to to the people in Africa. I mean, although these new species were found found in Africa, they give no credit. So that's the, the motivation for this talk, uh, if, you, if you know what I'm saying. Um, so, so the purpose is, uh, um, is, to, is to look at every paper, is to look at every paper and find out the, the location of the authors, the, the field of the paper, the journal of the paper and the year of the paper. So um, I'm sure all of you know Scopus. Scopus is a common is a common database. So if you go to Scopus, uh, the Scopus gives the, the the name of the paper, the authors in the paper, the journal name of the paper, and the year of the paper, and how many times it's been cited and things like that, right? So if you go to Scopus, you will see an output like this. Yeah, so now what we did is, okay, these, once again, these are the variables. So for every paper, you will have authors, you will have the document title, you have the year, you have the source title, which is the, the title of the journal. Like for example, statistics in medicine is the a, is a name of a journal or statistics and probability letters is the name of a journal and so on. Uh, and then you have the volume number or the issue number and the page number. Then you have the citations. Uh, then you have the DOI number. Then you have affiliations, uh, the corresponding address. Then you have the abstract and then you have the author keywords and then you have the index keywords so these are for every paper you can find data on on each of these variables right i'm sure all of you know this because i mean all of you have written papers so you know about about this right okay now now what we did is the following that um now for each of these papers for each of these papers we looked at the papers that are that have the the name of of an african country in the document title right so if, if the 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 title if the title of the paper contains uh, the name africa or or one of the 54 there are 54 countries i'm sure you know there are 54 countries in Africa. So if the title contains the, the name Africa or, the, or one of the 54 names of, of the countries, then we know that that paper is talking something about Africa, right? So then we looked at whether the, all the authors of the paper were actually from Africa, right, or not. Okay, so <clears throat> now, if we have a committee, like if you look at this picture here, if we have a committee of, of experts in Africa, then they can look at every paper and determine whether, whether the authors of the paper had enough knowledge to write the paper or not. So if, if, the authors, if, the, if none of the authors are from Africa, right, then it's dubious. Then, then it's, it's, really, it's really doubtful whether what they wrote in the paper is correct or not. If at least one of the if at least one of the authors is is from is based in Africa, then is then it's okay to say that that what whatever they wrote about in the paper may be correct, right? So that's what and what we did is we found that we found that there are over 350,000 titles. I mean, it, there are 350,000 papers in Scopus that have uh, that uh, that have Africa or one of the 54 names in the titles, right? 
So this is, I mean, 350,000 is a lot. It's, it's about third of a million. Third of a million papers that contain the name Africa or, or one of the names of the 454 countries on the title of the paper. And some of the, the, the oldest paper goes back to 1960. And we looked up up until 2019. And the, all these papers covered 20,000, over 20,000 different journals, uh, conferences, and circulars. And the authors for all these papers came from 200 different countries. And, um, and all these papers, they focused on topics in about over 40 different country, African countries. Right. Um, and as I said before, we, we can have the, there are three variables that are of interest. First is the, the title of the paper. And the second is the authors. You can have, say, one author, two authors, or three authors, or more authors. And the third variable is the affiliation. So author one may be from a university. A, author two may be from a different university. Author three may be from another university, right? So what we were looking for is we were looking for whether, whether at least one of these authors at least one of these authors is it has an Afri has an African affili affiliation. That is, at least one of the authors is is based in an institution that is in in Africa, so that they know that in the paper they know what they're actually talking about, right? Because for foreigners, for foreigners is is not. I mean, if you are not. In, if you're not in Africa, then it's really difficult to write something about a topic which is about Africa, right? So that's what we're looking for. Okay, so so this is a so this is what I basically just said that we were looking for affiliations. Um, um, we are looking for but at least one of the authors was affiliated to to an to an institution in Africa, and to do that is to do that is really difficult because if you go back to the previous slide, we have over three hundred and fifty thousand papers to look at, which is many many papers, right? So you can't you can't do it manually. So what we did is we wrote a program. We wrote a program in. Java. I'm sure you guys know JavaScript. JavaScript is a, is a programming language and it's very useful when you have to deal with uh, uh, like internet material. So we wrote a program in JavaScript that, that, that goes through every single paper and finds out whether, whether they have an author from who's affiliated to an African institution, right? So, so it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very it's a easy way to do it because you cannot obviously, you cannot do this manually because there are so many papers, it's really impossible to, to do this manually, okay? So we wrote this program to do it. All right, now, these are the, the countries that we looked at. Uh, so all the countries in green, so we looked at all the countries which are highlighted in green. So uh, we excluded South Africa because South Africa is, is much more developed scientifically compared to other countries. So we also excluded the, the Northern African countries like Mauritania, Algeria, Libya, and Egypt, and Morocco, and Tunisia. So we looked at all the papers, uh, all the papers published in Scopus that have the name Africa or uh, the name of one of these countries in green, including Madagascar, right? Okay. So, um, so this is what we came up with this output. So if the output gives you the, the name of the the title of the paper and the name of the journal. 
So this is uh, Nature. Nature, I'm sure you know Nature is the top journal in, uh, in the world. And then it gives the H factor of the journal. And then it says one. One means that there's at least one author affiliated in Africa. Zero means zero means that none of the authors are affi affiliated in Africa, right? And then it gives you the percentage of authors in Africa. So, so this means uh, only 0 0.3. I mean, three out of the ten authors. So suppose suppose this paper has 10 authors, right? So what this means is that only three of the 10 authors have affiliations in Africa, right? And this means uh, if, sub, if this paper had uh, 10 authors, this means that only two of the 10 authors have affiliations to, to Africa, right? Others don't, okay? Is it, are you guys okay so far? Hello, hello, Vera. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can continue. Yes, yes, okay. Yeah, I, I just want to make sure that you're following me because if you have if you have questions, please feel free to ask me. Okay. Okay. If you everybody wanted to do questions, it's okay. Oh yeah. So. Yeah, so this is the, the output that we get from the JavaScript program. So it gives you the title of the paper, the journal, name of the journal, and the edge factor of the journal. I'm sure you know what edge factor is. And then it gives the whether whether any of the uh, affiliations in Africa, yes or no. So yes, one means yes, zero means no. And then it's a percentage of authors in Africa, which means that how many of the authors have affiliations in Africa? So it's 0.3 means three out of the 10, 0.2 means two out of the 10, two out of 10, and so on, right? All right, so, <coughs> so that's, and if you look at this graph here, it gives you the, it gives you the uh, the story so it basically tells you that 51.3 uh, percent uh, have of of all the papers written about africa have no authors have no authors uh, belonging to any of the uh, affiliated to any of the institutions in Africa. And 26.3% have mixed authors. That means some of the authors belong to institutions in Africa and the remaining they do not. And only about 22.4% have, have African authorship means only this many of the papers have authors belonging to institutions in africa and the remaining so more than half of the papers 51 3 which is more than half more than half of the papers written about africa have no authors have no authors in africa which is a very bad thing because i mean you're you're writing papers i mean as you know we write papers every day and when you when you say like more than half of the papers written about Africa have zero authors from Africa. It's a really bad thing, you know. Sarah, there's one question. Yeah. Uh, the, these 51 percent, uh, they, they can have uh, an African author that is not located, based in Africa, or they, in fact, does not have an African author um it's possible yeah it's possible Vera. yeah it's possible it's possible that you could have an author that is you could have an african author who is in uh, like uk or america or us or some other country yeah but it's i mean we we excluded we excluded those cases but okay okay in, in, in the pro it's really difficult to it's really difficult to write a program to actually find the name of the African authors 
because it's not easy. So we excluded those cases. Okay, okay, thanks. Yeah. yeah. All right, so that's so. This is the overall picture of what we found uh, from the output. Now we also did this by. This is for all the papers, all the papers in all the different journals. Now we also did this by journal, like like Nature. I'm sure all of you know Nature is one of the top journals in the world. I mean, if you publish a paper in Nature, that means you're doing excellent research. I'm sure you know, everybody knows about this journal. It's very hard to publish a paper in Nature. Um, now, now we found out that, um, that in all the papers published in Nature about Africa, uh, all, about 69.7% of the papers have zero authors. Um, have zero authors affiliated in Africa, and um, and there are two circles. I think you, you shouldn't confuse. There's a there's a big circle and a small circle. The difference is this: the big circle corresponds to uh, the the big circle corresponds to whether the the whether they have any paper. Sorry, whether the authors any of the authors are in Africa or not. Whereas the, the small circle, it counts the, it counts how many of the authors, uh, how, I mean, how many of the authors are in Africa versus elsewhere. So that's why in the, in the small, if you look at the smaller circle, it says that 78%, 78.7% percent of the authors right are from outside of africa only 21.3 percent of the authors are in africa so there, there's a difference between the the smaller circle and the and the bigger circle the bigger circle corresponds to whether the authors sorry whether the paper has anyone from africa or not Whereas the, the smaller the, the smaller circle, the small circle corresponds to how many of the authors in the paper, right? The, in other words, the percentage of the authors in the paper, whether they are in, in Africa or, or not in Africa. So this is this is for nature. Uh, next one we looked at is science. I mean, science is another top journal in the world. I mean, it's very difficult to publish a paper in science. I'm sure you know that, right? So, so science, we found out that 72.5% um, 72, 72 of all the papers about Africa have zero authors. And also we found out that 86.7% of all the authors are from outside of Africa. So it's, again, it's really, really, really bad. <coughs> so, I mean, Nature and Science are the two, two top journals in the world. I'm sure you know that. And we, then we also looked at Lancet. Lancet is, uh, is, a, is a British medical journal. It's also, it's a, it's a very prestigious journal. I mean, this is not so bad compared to Nature and science now here is the percentages are not so bad right then we also looked at the proceedings of the national academy of sciences of the united states which is again a very top journal is very difficult to publish in that journal i'm sure you know it. so in this case again it's really bad you, you, you see that 90 91.5 percent of all the authors are from outside of Africa, right? Which is which is really really bad, right? Okay. Um, then we also looked at this Journal of Clinical Investigation here, and this is really really bad because almost all the hundred percent, nearly hundred percent of all the authors are from outside of Africa, <laughs> which is which is crazy because i mean you 
there's not even like point 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 zero zero one percent in Africa, like okay, and this is cancer research, which is another journal. So here is like ninety eight point five percent of all the authors are, are from outside of Africa, and this is Journal of Experiment experimental medicine it's again it's very bad so it says 99.9 percent .9 of all the authors are from outside of africa this is not bad this is energy conversion and management and here this is not so bad as you can see it's only like 64.4 percent of the authors are from outside of africa and uh, the, the next one is this is gastro gastroenterology which is again very is not really good at all okay uh, 97.6 percent of authors are from outside and this is journal of cell biology not very good at all is this 98.1 percent all right, so these are so we did this for many different journals. So here I just wanted to show you the results for a selection of the journals, especially for the first two, which is nature and science. I mean, I'm sure all of you know the two top journals in the world are nature and science. They are really difficult to publish. And what what these two what these two pictures show is that that if somebody from Africa writes a paper and, and sub, if, if somebody from Africa writes a paper and, and if submits the paper to nature or science, then probably it will, they will reject it probably. <laughs> they will probably reject that paper. But if somebody from, from, from UK or Europe or some other country, if he writes a paper about Africa, and since that submits that paper to nature or science, then they may have a better chance of being accepted by accepted by by the, uh, by science or, or nature, which is not the right thing because they I mean how which is not correct because what do they know about Africa? Because if they are in Europe, if they are in in the UK, or if, or if they're in the United States, what do they know about Africa? I mean, so, I mean, and yet they get away. I mean, yet, you know, they, they, they get away with publishing papers in these two top journals, right? Uh, science and, and science and nature, right? Now, let me show you something else I did, uh, we did. Um, this, this, in this picture here, I don't know if you can see it clearly or not, but what this shows is the, on the, on the y-axis, on the y, uh, I didn't show you clearly, on the y-axis, what I have is the, is the percentage of papers that have zero authors in Africa. And on the x-axis, you have the, the field of research, right? So you have uh, veterinary, medicine, nursing, psychology, computer science, math engineering, mathematics, and so on. So for every, every field, there is a, there is a corresponding uh, percentage of papers with zero African authors or zero authors in Africa. So as you can see, it's not good at all. I mean, medicine is not bad. Medicine is only like about 40% of the papers. 40% of the papers have zero authors. But you should take uh, mathematics. Mathematics is about 60%. 60% of all the papers in mathematics about Africa have no authors from Africa. And you should take neuroscience. Neuroscience is the last one. Neuroscience, there are about 80%. 80% of all the papers about Africa on neuroscience have zero authors. 
so so this this is a very very useful picture it tells you like for for different areas different areas of science you know what what the percentages are like all right i mean certain areas they're not bad but most areas uh like neuroscience and material science chemical engineering physics and astronomy the percentage the percentages are very very high that is percentages with zero Af zero african zero authors in africa right okay so that's one thing i want to show you this is and um, this is kind of i already shown you uh all right this uh, this picture is also useful so what this shows is again on the x-axis you have the ranking of the journal which is i'm sure you know is the h factor so h factor is basically if you have a high h factor that means the journal is good if you have a low h factor that means the h and the journal is not good <coughs> and on the y-axis you have the percentage of zero f zero africa affiliated authors so what this shows is that as the edge factor increases when you have when you have a large edge factor like science or journal i mean science or nature they have a large edge factor because they are the top journals in the world right so for for a journal that has a large edge, edge factor the percentage of authors having zero affiliated zero africa affiliated authors is very high so this is basically comes back to what i was saying earlier that is if you want to have a if you want to have a paper about africa uh, and you want to have it published in a top journal like if you, sorry if you, if you want to you want to publish that paper in a very top journal like like nature or science then you better not have anyone any of the authors from africa because it will probably get rejected by the editors I and mean, that's what this this picture here tells you that this picture tells you that if you want to publish the paper in a very 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 good journal then you, sh the, you should have the the percentage of zero africa africa affiliated authors i as high as possible right you see this is 100 percent 100 percent is the top zero percent is the bottom so it's so it's a that's the, that's the that's the life now it's, it's it's very wrong and what this picture tells you is is something very wrong about this picture but that is what the reality is that's what the reality is because if you want if you want to publish this paper about africa in a very top journal then you need to have as few or you need to have no authors or as few or as few authors as from from africa which which is which is not the right thing and which is which is very wrong thing to do but unfortunately that's what life is like now so and this is the same thing this is the same thing but in the reverse direction now here this picture here it tells you it tells you the again there are two uh, on the y-axis you have the edge factor uh, on the edge on the x-axis you have the time so it's from 1960 to 20, 2010. so what the, there are four different curves um, the the curve in blue sorry in green is the percentage of africa affiliated authors so it says according to, so the, you see that has the lowest edge factor so the papers with the papers written by african authors have the lowest edge factor um and the red one the red so the red one is the percentage of zero africa aff affiliated authors so that's the red curve which has the 
the, the papers written by people from from outside Africa with zero uh, zero authors from Africa. The, the, the H factor is above the green one. So it, they publish in, in journals in journals that are better according to the H factor, right? Okay, so so it, it, so this picture tells you more or less what I showed you earlier. Yeah. So so there is there is there is, there is a lot of uh, discrimination. Uh, I mean, there is a lot of discrimination about whether the authors of the papers are from Africa or, or not from Africa. So if they are all, if none of them are from Africa, then the papers are likely to be published in better journals. And if they are all from Africa, then they are not likely to be published in good journals, right? Which is which is not the right thing, okay? Um, and that's one of the things that I'm trying to address through the charity Etiquette Africa, which I established four years ago, right? Okay. Um, so now this this is a map. So here is a very useful map, and I've used the color color coding. Um, so it basically tells you the percentage of no local author publications. So it's green uh, green. Um, corresponds to corresponds to papers where uh, you have um, <coughs> uh, you, you have you have no uh, the, the lowest of the percentages and 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 the red corresponds to the highest the highest of the percentages so, so, so if you look at countries like the Democratic Republic of Congo, for example, that has red, which means that that nearly all the papers about uh, DRC have zero authors uh, from that country. And the same thing with uh, Sudan. Same thing with Somalia. The same thing with uh, Niger, for example. So those countries in red, uh, the countries in red have have nearly nobody uh, um, in the papers written about them, right? Okay. And this is the same thing. This this graph here is this is the average journal ranking. So again the the ranking is is highest when it's green and is lowest when it's red so for example for nigeria uh, the ranking is is low uh, for drc the ranking is high because uh, because um, most of the papers are written by people from outside whereas in nigeria that's not the case. Nigeria, nearly, there are many local local authors um, in Nigeria who are writing papers about their country. Okay, um, and this is this picture here. Uh, on the x-axis, we have the research population in total. So it goes from zero to thirty thousand. And on the y-axis, we have the percentage of zero of the publications. Uh, so for example, if you look at uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo, nearly 100% of their papers are being published by people from outside of that country. And they have, they have, in, in their country, they have very, very few people in, interested in research. Because as you know, in DRC, there, there's constant war going on. I mean, there's, there, aren't, there aren't many people who, are, who want to do research because they don't have the time, they don't have the money 
They don't have the resources to do research in, in the country. Not like you and I, for example. I mean, we, get, we have the time to do research. But in many countries in Africa, people don't have the time. They don't have the energy. They don't have the resources to do research. But on the other hand, people from outside of the outside of Africa, like in places like Europe or UK or USA, they are using they are using you know uh, these countries to write papers about these countries and publishing them in very good journals without without ever helping anybody in that country, without ever being in, without ever visiting those countries, right? Okay, so that's what, like, if you look at, for example, Nigeria, Nigeria has, has about, is, is near the bottom of the curve, right? Bottom of the, of the, of the plot. Nigeria has about, uh, about 15% maybe, or 10% uh, zero local author publications, but, but um, their, the research population is not very high either, right? Okay. And, and the same thing in Kenya. Kenya has about 40% and their research population is, is about, about 10,000 or just over 10,000. And if you look at I, Ivory Coast, which is, is a country in the, in the west coast of Africa, they have very small people interested in research and they have about more than about 50% of all the papers about that country are from people outside. Uh, of Ivory Coast, and the same thing in Rwanda. I mean, Rwanda is, I think you may remember, Ru Rwanda is one of those countries affected by the genocide not long ago, and 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 uh, the genocide was France. I mean, some of the European countries, especially France, was involved in that genocide. And they just apologized for the president. The president of France just apologized. I don't know whether you read the news today, but he said that the president of France, Macron, he apologized for the the genocide in Rwanda. Anyway, in Rwanda, once again, there are very few people interested in research, but about sixty percent, more than about sixty percent of the papers are about Rwanda. Are, being published by people outside of Rwanda, okay. And this is this, in this in this in this plot uh, on the x-axis we have the researchers per per million population, and on the y-axis we have the percentage of zero local author publications. So it's the, the, the conclusion is pretty much the same as the previous graph I showed you. And in this, in this graph, on the x-axis, we have the R&D spending. R&D is research and development. I'm sure you know that. R&D spending percentage. And on the y-axis, we have the percentage of zero local author publications. You know, most most African countries they don't have money to spend on research, so their R and D spending is is very very small, very very low. Like for example, for Democratic Republic of Congo, which is on the top of the of the of the plot, you can see the R and D spending is very very small, and only hundred percent of all the papers are published by people outside. Okay, and um, and the same thing in Nigeria. Nigeria, the R and D spending is is not is not high, but about it's not high. About about fifteen percent of the papers are being published by outside. All right. The same thing with many other countries, like in Kenya, the 
in Kenya, uh, the R&D spending is not that bad, but yet um, about 40% of the papers are being published by people outside. Okay, so this is, okay, um, and this is a similar picture, but this time we are considering the total R&D spending, okay? And this is um, HDI. HDI is, I'm sure you know, HDI is the Human Development Index. So it's basically, it tells you how strong your economy is. So if, if your uh, HDI is small, that means the economy is not doing well. If HDI large, that means the economy is doing well, okay? So like if you take, for example, Niger. Niger is a country in the west coast of Africa. HDI is very small. And uh, for nearly 100% of all the papers are written by people outside of Niger. And the same thing with South Sudan. HDI is very small. Uh, and nearly 100% of all the papers are being published by people outside. The same thing with Democratic Republic of Congo. Uh, in South Africa, HDI is not bad. South, because South Africa, as you know, is one of the most developed countries in Africa. And um, here is uh, it's about 20% of the papers are being published by people outside. Okay. Right. So basically, so these are all the pictures I wanted to show you today. I mean, I have more pictures. Um, I mean, this is a paper that this work I've, I'm describing to you today is the paper that I wrote with uh, with two people, uh, one from um, Ethiopia. He's a scientist in Ethiopia, and another guy from Niger. Niger is a, is a country in the west coast of Africa. Ethiopia is, is in the east coast of Africa. So th this is a joint paper that I have written with, with the two authors. And so, um, so just to kind of summarize, so this, this picture here kind of summarizes what I was telling you in this talk. <coughs> so basically, uh, reputation matters. Reputation, citations, uh, do matter because most most of the scientists in 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 Africa they don't have reputation they don't have citations and because of that for them it's difficult to get funding or equipment and because they can't get funding or equipment they cannot do uh, research that has good impact right so this is like a vicious circle this is like a vicious circle and so you need a good reputation to, in order to get funding and equipment and and once you have funding and equipment you can have you can have an impactful you can you can conduct impact impact and research that has a good impact and that will bring you good reputation. But no, I mean, the, the people in the country, in, in Africa, they have the, this problem, exactly this problem. They cannot come out of this cycle. And this is where my, my charity that I established four years ago, uh, Educate Africa, this is what I'm trying to help them with. I'm, I'm as I said before, I'm, I'm working with uh, quite a few researchers, I mean, in Africa, writing papers with them. Um, I just had a paper published in Scientific Reports. Uh, so I'm, I'm giving them an opportunity to work with, uh, you know, people like me. Um, so, so, it, it, so it gives them exposure. It gives them exposure to the kind of research that, that we do. But unfortunately, not not many of us are doing that. I think it will be good if, especially if you guys in Brazil, 
can also do something similar, like like work or collaborate collaborate with researchers in in Africa and 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 help them to write papers and publish them in good journals like like even the top journals like science or nature for example right and because that's the that's the only way i mean that's that's the only way that we can help them i mean with respect to you know with respect to scientific innovation because in even when i was growing up when i was growing up in in zimbabwe i i had nobody helping me with i had no idea what research was you know i had nobody to help me with ideas i had uh now i know a little bit so, so i'm trying to help them so i'm trying to give them back you know what i learned here uh, if if more people can do that that will be really helpful uh, for people there okay um this is the one this is the picture. It's a it's a news item that came out in in BBC. It says that you know you know what the, I'm sure all of you know that the humans the human beings we all came from Africa, and there's a lot of research about about which country or which uh, where we came from, whether we originated in in um, south africa or mozambique or Namibia or angola or uh, so there there is there's a lot of research about the origins of humans uh, uh, but nearly all of the all of the research are being done by by europeans or americans or Australians and uh, people like that. There are very few Africans who are actually involved in research about the origins of humans. Although they all, we know that humans came from Africa. And the reason for that is because they don't have the funding. You know, because <laughs> just what I explained in the previous slide that they don't have the funding, the Africans themselves they don't have the funding to research about the origins of humans, although humans themselves came from Africa, which is kind of a, which is a kind of a irony. It kind of explains, right? So this is the end of my talk, and if you have questions, I would really appreciate. I'm sorry this is a short talk, but maybe next time I will try to give you something more detailed. Um, hello, you guys okay, so Sarah Lee, it's okay. Uh -huh. Finishing, and yeah, that's the yeah, it's the end of my talk. Yeah, okay. Uh, thank you, Sarah Lee, for our presentation. It's nice, it's very so good, very good to know about these things. It's for us, for me, for example not uh, common to know about this this discussion about the africa it's very, very good to know uh, information about this but uh, anybody have a question 